Welcome to Man360, I'm your host Brian. Today we have a couple of amazing interviews for you. First we chat with evangelist Leif Hetland, who is the president and founder of Global Mission Awareness. Leif is a global evangelist with a heart to see an impartation of God's love, healing, and apostolic authority through the paradigm of kingdom family. We'll also hear from vocalist, pianist, songwriter, TV host, and music producer, Derek Williams. Derek is the host of a program that plays on CTN called Gospel Voice, and I was able to sit down with him to hear his story and his take on why worship is important in the life of a man. I also asked Derek to play and sing something original for the show, which I know you'll enjoy. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. When I first met Leif before our interview, I started praying for our time together and began to weep with him, overcome by the presence of God. There are people you meet in life and it feels as if they spend more time with Jesus than with humans, and that's Leif Hetland. His ministry, Global Mission Awareness, builds, equips, mentors, and provides resources for pastors and missionaries in over 22 nations. Leif's heart to be a conduit of the Spirit of God here on earth is seen in everything he does. I thoroughly enjoyed our time together and his input on a man's need for the true love of God in life was inspiring. Here's my interview with global evangelist Leif Hetland. So Leif, thank you for being on Man360. It is my joy. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate um, your heart. You know, we heard you, I think last year when you were here as well at the conference. And, um, you know, just to hear what you were sharing and, and just some of the things. I wanted to get to know you a little bit better and I felt like you had some real gold in you to really share with our men today. So can you share a little bit about who you are and kind of your ministry and what you do? Sure, uh, my name is Leif Hetland and I'm from the country of Norway and uh, born and raised in a small little place on the southwest coast of Norway. Uh, came from a good Christian family, but then something happened, some pain when mm. I was 12 years old mm -hmm. uh, that happened and because of that abuse, shame came in. So I think that I struggled with, boy, as a little baby, fear, shame, and later on, guilt. That was wow. three things that was kind of a weapons the enemy was coming against yeah. me. But then I got gloriously saved as a prodigal son who for about five years ended up with addiction because when you have pain in your life, you're seeking for pleasure. Yeah. Pain seeks pleasure. So yeah. I was looking for something to touch those hidden core pain. I just had a glorious news when I was 18, I met Jesus. I'm, I'm like the prodigal son that came home and mm. got gloriously saved and healed and delivered. Wow. But the problem was I went from rebellion to religion. Mm. That is, nobody thinks of that. They no. think religion, you're good, you're safe, so, you made it, you're going to heaven. So here I am, <laughs> because on the inside I'm still an orphan. Yeah. I have good parents, but on the inside I'm an orphan. Yeah. And I'm living for love, because I don't know how to live from love. Yeah. Uh, and I learned how to be an achiever. Norwegians, we get value based on what you do, and that's what right. you orphan do. So mm. that started my journey, and I ended up getting married, and I've been happily married to Jennifer for 32 years. That's awesome. And we have four grown kids uh, together, and she is a Cherokee Indian, and here is a Norwegian Viking together, and you can imagine. <laughs> I know awesome. we have an African-American son-in-law, so we're just a, a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> that's family. Great. Hopefully we're gonna have chocolate yeah. grandbabies in the future. <laughs> it's awesome. So anyway, no, so then, uh, but I think the couple of highlights, I ended up going to college and seminary, actually an evangelical realm. Okay. And then uh, I was a pastor in Norway and our family lived there. And then something happened is I had an encounter uh, with the Holy Spirit yeah. that also changed me. And that was kind of a shift into what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, uh, Dr. Randy Clark is his name, but yep. he, he prayed for me and he says, you are a bulldozer. And I'm thinking, no, I'm a Baptist pastor. I didn't know much about this. Wow, world. so you're a Baptist. I was a Baptist, wow. yeah, a conservative Baptist. Yeah. And I say, I see this as a bulldozer. You're gonna go into the darkest places in the world where wow. the gospel has never been before. And this big light is following after you and thousands of people wow. are following after you. And the next moment through experiencing a fire and electricity, I was just so wow. overwhelmed by the power of God. And six months later, I'm in the darkest places of the world in Pakistan, among these unreached, and yeah. 24,000 uh, 24, Muslims received Jesus. Wow. The blind eyes was open, the deaf ears was open, a quadriplegic, I thought they were attacking us, this radical group came towards us, but Jesus touched them, so got totally, awesome. he got totally healed, and 
and it just changed me. Yeah. And from that moment, it's kind of, you've been fishing all night, getting very little, right. and you learned the Jesus way of doing it. So that started a journey that connected to the ministry they run called Global Mission Awareness, awesome. where I know that our primary focus was, we want everyone in the world to know how good Papa God is yeah. and how loved they are. And then I realized that almost half of the world's population, they've never heard of the first coming of Jesus mm -hmm. while we are waiting for the second right. coming. <laughs> Right. And they don't even know that Jesus, so that day in December 95, it changed me. Yeah. Because this one woman, she opened up her burqa and she said, uh, how long have you known about this Jesus? Wow. And I started to describe, well, we have had Jesus for a thousand years in my country, Norway. And she said, why didn't you come earlier? Why wow. didn't you come earlier? My husband, he died and, and my son died two years ago. And they never got to know, I never heard of this Jesus before. Wow. Why didn't you come earlier? So I dedicated my life and I just made myself available to Jesus. Yeah. If, if I can just be like a coin in your hand, use me in whatever way you want to. Right. And it's been an amazing journey. And one more highlight in year 2000, I had a baptism of love experience and I met Papa God yeah. and he became my father. And I went from being an orphan to be a son. This liquid love was coming over me, took me into when I was in my mother's womb and some of the insecurity and the fear yeah. because perfect love takes away fear. That's so great. And then in the next moment, he dealt with shame and guilt and I got restored back again yeah. to the Father. And there was an audible voice from heaven that says, Leif, you're my, and you're my beloved, you're my beloved son. Not yeah. servant, not the apostle, not pastor, not doctor, not right. author, whatever. Right. You're my beloved son, son, son. And he says, I love That's you, so son. Great. And I am well pleased with you. Yeah. Something broke at me because mm. all I wanted to do was to please God after everything that Jesus has done for me. Yeah. And I realized I'm already pleasing to right. Him. I already have an A plus before I take the right. exam. <laughs> Why would I want to live from a pressure when I can right. live from the Father's pleasure? That's and so this great. Viking Norwegian that knew how to be a lion met the lamb. And Jesus yeah. is that lamb and he just melted me. And now tears, I started to weep and I just started to feel the brokenness in people's life yeah. and started to love differently. And all I wanted to do was to receive his love so I could become his love and give his love into my home, uh, to my wife, to my children, mm -hmm. because so much of my value system, I don't do enough. And wow. if I don't do, then I don't have, and then I don't become. Because many of us men, we get our value in what we are doing. Exactly. Instead of who we are. Right. And then I realized that it's not what I do that makes me who I am. It is who I am that makes me do what I do. Right, right. Well, I know you mentioned, and I, I just heard that you have a new book out as well. Can you share a little bit about that as well? Yeah, it's called Healing the Orphan Spirit. That's what happened to me, and I didn't know about it 20 years ago, wow. that I had an orphan heart and an orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Because there's like, there's still a black hole in your yeah. soul. Yeah. And when Jesus says in John 14, 18, I will not leave you as an orphan, I will come to you. Mm -hmm. There's this cry from Jesus, where well, Jesus didn't come just to save us from our sin, but to save us to something. Right. If not, you have a half a gospel. Right. He brought us back again to the Father. That's so good. Where we could see the Father's face and hear the Father's voice and feel the Father's love, bring us back again to the intention what Papa God had for each one of us. So that orphan spirit mm. is so much an opposition. And I just met with a CEO, a brilliant, strong, typical good masculine man. Mm -hmm. And we were just sitting across from each other. And then he just started to weep. And he says, I have that orphan heart. Wow. And all of my life, I got my value in what I was doing and climbing on the top of the mountain. But I realized when I was on the top there, it was actually in the wrong place. Right. And then the father's love went in and dealt with some of the insecurity and some of the fear and helped him because yeah. whom the son set free becomes free indeed. Yeah. And then free people, they set people free. Right, they want to make more people free. Yes. So what do you think is would be the one, maybe the best godly advice that you could give men about the love of God, about opening up to the love of God, to allow the love of God to change them? I think the, the first one that changed me uh, 20 years ago is that I realized that God is love. Hmm. Right. That is the doesn't, nature. He doesn't of have love. It he is love. He is love. And later on, he says, as I am, so are you in yeah. this world. So just change me. Because if you were to tell me, I mean, Jesus, I'm like, wow. Even later on, I got to meet the Holy Spirit. But when it came to God or the Father, especially, mm -hmm. I, I, some of my earthly images, because I, I felt on the inside with my father that I had to do something yeah. to have something to become. Right. So I realized one of the secrets for so many of us, we have a wrong view of God. 
And we have a view of God that does not look like Jesus. Right. So I've wrote a whole book about seeing through heaven's eyes because that meant so much for me that what happened to me that day is I got the God that looks just like Jesus. And right. I realized all you did, Jesus, was to show me how the Father is like. Right. And I've always loved you, Jesus. I felt comfortable. But I didn't feel comfortable with God. So when I had issues in my life, I was hiding away from him mm. because he's a holy God. I couldn't handle my messes. Yeah. Instead, he is a loving father. And when there was sin in my life, I'm actually the one that is turning away from his love. Mm. And the father is there with an open invitation. Yeah. And he doesn't want anything to separate us from his love. And love connects, fear disconnects. So for me, the first thing is our view of him. But the second of all is to know how much he loves us. Yeah. That Jesus didn't die on the cross to make us valuable. He right. died on the cross because we are valuable. Already had that value. We had that value. So the way that the Father values us, see the price that he paid. Yeah. So I realize it's not just that God is love, but how much he loves me. Right. Despite of. And that is the whole motivation. How, do I, how can I I love my wife unconditional. He loves me unconditional. Right. Or my kids, or my neighbor, or my enemies. So when I'm going into the darkest or the most radical Muslims, mm -hmm. and I'm meeting in that place, that I can only give what I've received. Right. So I think that the, the simplicity is when we have a wrong view of God, uh, then in that moment it is to repent yeah. and realize I started a journey. I want a God that looks just like Jesus. Right. And then I want everyone in the world experiencing a God right. just like Jesus. Yeah, it's interesting too how you know, when we give God our best, you know, that sounds like we wouldn't give other people our best, but actually what they get actually better than we could give if we try to give them our first, when we give God our best and we, we were transformed by him and not just, and I, I, even, I don't even like the word changed because transformed to me is like more that it's, it's everything about you. You know, it's yeah. everything you say, everything you do, how you treat your family, how you're an employee, how you're an employer, you know, those kind of things too. So Leif, can you just pray for our men today and just that God would just impart something special to them about the love of God and just releasing some of those hurts and maybe some of those things is what you shared. It would be a great honor. And, yeah. and I just even want to encourage you, even today, and just open yourself up to have an encounter yeah. with a God that looks just like Jesus, a Father that loves you, a Father that is actually there with open arms. He's running towards you, not away from you. The Bible said that He was looking. He was full of compassion. Mm. He was running. Then He wants to embrace you, and He wants to kiss you. And something starts to take place to the look of the Father. And it doesn't matter if you score or do not score. It matters that the Father is well pleased with you. Mm -hmm. So I just want to release what, yes. Papa God, what you did for me and you continue to do for me and for my family and how this love just continue to, whoa, bring transformation. Mm -hmm. It's just changing me from the inside out. And I thank you that it is so beautiful to wake up in the morning knowing that I am mm. well loved. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking now for every single person that is out there just to be able to have a revelation, mm -hmm. to have an impartation so there would be an activation of that love. And for the next 30 days, I will challenge you, even uh, as grown men, just to uh, say, Papa, how much do you love me? And in the second I want you to do is says, I want to love me the way that you love me. Mm -hmm. And no, that's not selfish. That is selfless love. And then from that place, just let them teach you how to love the people that are around you. Mm. Wow. Place each one of them on Papa God's most wanted list so they can experience yeah. the very love of their Father. Simple thing, 30 days and your upgrade is confirmed. To receive His love, become love so that you can give His love. There's no better place to live. That's great, great. Leif, thank you so much. It is my honor, Brian. It's great to meet you. <laughs> I just you. appreciate your ministry and, uh, you know, just that you are... A man that's not afraid, like again, before we came on camera, we were crying and yeah. just the Holy Spirit was on us. <laughs> yeah. And um, I feel like we need to live in that place because I know our families are going to follow us yeah. where we go. And if we're afraid to go those places and let God be able just to keep us soft and pliable. And I just appreciate you. We just pray for you and Jennifer and your ministry. And thank just you. thank you for being on Man 360. I appreciate it. And thank you, man. Derek Williams is a very talented and gifted man of God. Yolanda and I have always enjoyed his program that plays on CTN called Gospel Voice but I especially enjoyed my conversation with Derek. We talked not only about worship in the life of a man, but his thoughts on race relations today and what godly men look like as an example to the world. Derek has quite a personal story about his life growing up, and it was amazing to see how God took care of him and also directed his steps into what he's doing today. Here's my conversation with music producer and TV host Derek Williams and a short musical segment we asked him to do specifically for Man360. Derek. Thank you for being on Man360. 
Thank you for inviting. So I, Yolanda and I have watched your program for many years and I just was always like, I just, I just love your, I love your heart that you project. And I just want to tell you that as a, as a testimony to you that I see your heart on TV. And sometimes that's hard. I think on Christian TV too, because it can kind of come across as you're trying to like trying too hard for yes. people. Yes. And I just see that authentic heart. And I wanted you to just be able to share a little bit about gospel voice and what you do with your program, but also just talk about you kind of the behind the scenes. And maybe people are watching this and they know gospel voice. and They're like, you know, I don't know a lot about Derek. I want to know a little yes. bit more about him and what he does. So can you share a little bit about um, how you got into music and how long you've been doing it? Well, I come from a um, family of musicians. My mom, granddaddy, grandma, brother, sisters, all of them play for big churches. Wow. And uh, I was the kid that sort of like didn't really put all the effort in taking lessons. I, I wind up playing with the dog or the fish, right. you know, but it was in me. And um, after the military, I really started putting hours in 10 mm -hmm. to 15 hours. In, and I realized that that was my calling, my calling. Um, I was yeah. singing, I was playing. But the main thing is that I, I, I developed this relationship with the Lord at a young age. Wow. I'm talking about we couldn't go outside because of the it was, it was about to rain. And I had the presence of mind through mom having us in Sunday school and everything. I used to pray. And I said, Lord, please don't allow it to rain. I want to go outside and play. I remember those days that it was raining and it wasn't raining in our wow. yard. <laughs> so mama had to let me out. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I got to get this kid out of the house. Yeah, she got to let me out, you know. So, oh, it's, so awesome. it's, it's that relationship yeah. that really uh, forms what you say. Yeah. It forms it, 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 it forms your uh, relationship with the people that you meet. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit alerts you to a lot of things like David. Mm -hmm. We talked about on um, Offset about how God directed David's life. I believe he, he directs our life. Yeah. You and I are meeting. And I've never met you before, right. but God is making this happen. Right. Somebody's going to see this. Right. Yeah, I really believe, too, even the process of what we use as Christian television, um, you know, the, the power and the importance of being able to get the message out. You know, yes. I always say it's like, you know, we're the megaphone for the church. You know, the church is like the guitar or the other yes. people, the guitar that yes. aren't plugged into the amplifier. We're the amplifier you plug into, and then we get the message out. Yes. Yes. So talk a little bit about Gospel Voice and what you do with the ministry of Gospel Voice and where you feel like it's been. And I know we were talking uh, previously about kind of where you feel like it's going in the future. Kind of talk about the development of that. Well, the gospel voice started out with um, I had uh, colleagues playing. I'm, I'm, I'm a jazz pianist. Which and, is my favorite type of music, by the way. I love <laughs> jazz piano. So and and I, um, a lot of my colleagues, they were also um, involved in church. So we put the band together and uh, God, uh, he just blessed us with a great rehearsal place. And and. Of course, you go through your divas, you know, the, yeah. the different musicians and everything. <laughs> but the ones who truly love the Lord stuck in there. And yeah. um, it was a lot of labor in dealing with a band like that because you mm -hmm. have a lot of different characters in there. Yeah. Uh, um, but um, God has blessed us to become one um, and be able to have some consistency in the musicianship. Yeah. Now, after the this COVID, COVID thing, um, is, it changed it up. And we're going to do a new thing where I'm inviting musicians to just um, be an accompaniment. Um, I'll send a video to them, yeah. ask them to sing background or uh, a play, yep. and we're going to put that together. That's a great idea. Um, and what makes this so awesome is that um, music is universal. Yeah. And um, I'm, we do from reggae on there, rock to blues to jazz, all type of uh, music on there. Mm -hmm. And when I meet other people... Hey, I, I know you, and it's amazing that they know me because I have on a hat and glasses. How do you know me? <laughs> yeah. So, Are you singing your order at the Starbucks or something? Yeah, <laughs> I, well, saying it, and they're like, yeah. oh, I know that voice. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, it's and it's amazing that God puts the right people yeah. at CTN yeah. to, to, to get his message out like you and myself. Yeah. And we are right in the groove of being that that vocal part, that, that yeah. gospel voice that they need out there, yeah. especially now. Yeah, I think, you know, we talk about ministry to people and, you know, we were talking a little bit about, you know, just where does the heart of a worshiper come from? And, you know, it's where you're fed, you know, yes. where you feel like it's coming in and what's going out. And you shared, you know, you, you felt like you wanted to share a little bit kind of about the BLM and kind of some yes. of the, 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 some of that feeding yes. basically of our, of our world and the lack of accountability and some of those things too. Can you share a little bit about this that? relationship that we have um, with Jesus? Um, 
all of the different things that's going on in the world, if you don't have something that filter what is true and mm-hmm. what is not, it will actually cause you to become a part of that. That's really good, Derek. It, you really you good. don't have, and when we got that relationship, the Holy Spirit said, mm, man, come on, man. Right. He lifts you above that yeah. so you can see it coming. Yeah. But if you're down there where it is, it jumps on you and you just mm. become part of it. You don't go do no research. You think what you hear is the, 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 the truth. Yeah. And we're seeing right now in our generation uh, um, that the young people are being told narratives and they, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. And they act upon it because they don't have that relationship. Yeah. And that's where we come in. We have to show that there's a relationship you have to have with the creator yeah. to help your thinking. Yeah. Just your thinking. Yeah, I think, too, you mentioned, too, I, I mean, it kind of shocked me a little bit. You said that you actually had a cross burned in your front yard sure when you did. were a kid. So yes. it wasn't like you just grew up kind of in this white, so to speak, environment, yes. or sterile environment where you weren't really exposed to racial tensions yes. and things, too. And I was talking to another friend, um, some other friends, and just saying, you know, it's so important that we listen to other people and in, in their perspective and what they what they feel, but that we know where our foundation is. Yes. Because if we're only listening without a foundation, yes. like you're saying, we can be tossed to and fro mm-hmm. and, and be wrapped up. In can you imagine things. if I would allow that cross burning I wouldn't be able to see that with you if right. I allowed that to affect me. Right. I'll be thinking of those words I've heard from uh, 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 coming up amongst the, the guys I came up with. Yeah. You know, I can see it with you. In fact, you would have to be black for me to speak to you. Yeah. Haven't you heard that lately? I have heard that frequently. <laughs> I feel like it's, it, and it's, it, it's hard because I'll just say that too, just as a you know, straight, white, Christian man that's trying to follow Christ, trying to love people, trying to do those things, it really pigeonholes because you're like, what do I say? What don't I say? And I had a a good friend that told me, you know, just be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And and again, that's all part of that worship time. Like you were saying, and we were referencing, I think we were talking on the phone about that too, about how the importance and the power of watching David's life and what set him up for success in life was that that worship time yes. was being the harpist. Yes. And also that he was known as a good harpist. It wasn't yes. like he just was plucking out there yeah, that's right. and that's watching right. the sheep. He was actually he was good. good at his, he was at his good. Skill. It's not yes. just being bad at that. So yeah. spe- speaking of being good at music, um, I know you're an excellent pianist and actually have some uh, some work that you're that you've been working on some things. And so I want you to do a little bit of music for us. Okay. All right. I would love All to. Right. I would love to. This is Derek Williams of Gospel Voice. He's going to do a little bit of worship for us. You can also go to ctnonline.com and go to On Demand. You can see all of the Gospel Voice episodes. And you can also go to man360.tv, go to our additional content page, and we will show you some more amazing content from Derek. Oh, Lord, I'd like to uh, just start out by thanking you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Thank you for who you are, your word, your promises. Father, you're so good to us. We lift up all the men with this particular song right here is a question and an answer that we must all answer. While I'm down here It's my choice to live how I choose I can walk wise Or I can be another fool Nothing lasts forever Only one thing that matters when it's all over and done. And you look back over my life. Can you say I walked with God? Will he say? 
good and faithful servant. Then I didn't live in vain. Soon the grass will wither. There's a life to remember Through the storms Standing strong Stepped on Moved on While I'm down here Jesus, I'm feeling you My heart is open And I I want to be just like you Only one thing that lasts forever And to me it matters When it's all And you look back over my life Can you say I walk with God? Will he say good and faithful servant You fought on good fight You kept the faith Then I didn't live in vain. Brian Morris has been presenting the gospel for over 25 years and has an incredible testimony as well as a passion to help men step into the fullness of who God created them to be. If you would like to have Brian speak at your church or your next men's event, please contact us at man360.tv. Let's do our 360 degree review from today's program. Great men in this world all have one thing in common. They love Jesus more than anything and prove that love with a life that shows. That is both Leif and Derek. When I talk with Leif, you could see his love for Jesus and the lost. His ministry has already reached over 1 million people worldwide, and I feel like that's just the start. Derek shared some raw and emotional thoughts about race relations in our culture and what it means to be a godly worshiper in this life. His advice to seek out the truth and not just accept anything the media and world tries to give is something we all need to keep in mind. I can say that from each of these interviews that I felt like I walked away a better person and that Leif and Derek made investments in me. I hope each of their conversations meant something to you as well. You can find all the links from both conversations on the additional content page of our website. Man360 exists to help you be complete in every way through Christ, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I'm glad you stopped by and spent some time with us today. Please connect with us on our website, Facebook, and Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on Man360. When I first... When I first... When I first... Wow. Okay, it would help if my floor director would stop laughing when I start talking. Look at you're bouncing the camera as you're laughing so hard. They love Jesus more than anything and prove that love with a life that shows. Wow, that is. Prove that love with a life that shows. Prove that love with a life that shows. Prove that love with a life that shows.